In many ways, our early history is part of the story of North America and Texas. Nomadic humans were likely the first to have occupied North Central Texas. In later years, small groups of foraging hunters occupied our region for short periods of time, but no evidence of Native American settlements have ever been found in Plano. Following Mexican independence from Spain, the area of Plano was claimed under Mexican rule. But it wasn't until the founding of the Republic of Texas in 1836 that new settlers would be attracted to our area. Just four short years later, McBain Jameson, the first known settler of Plano, established a farmstead north of present-day downtown. 1840 to 1872 were Plano's early years. During this period, our community was mostly scattered farmsteads. The beginning of downtown Plano began to take shape as a post office was established in the cabin of William Foreman. The first public school was established and our oldest homes, including the Collingwood House, were built. Plano was founded in 1852. Town residents rejected the original name of Fillmore and decided to name the city Plano, which they believed to be the Spanish word for plain. The first free African-American to move to Plano was Andy Drake, arriving in 1860. He is the forefather of Plano's African-American community. By 1870, our city's population was 155. 1872 to 1895 was a transformative phase of Plano's history. The opening of the Houston and Texas Central Railroad changed Plano from a community of scattered farms and homesteads to a center of business and agriculture. Plano became a center for importing and exporting crops in South Collin County. By 1887, Plano was shipping more grain than any other station on the h and Railroad north of Dallas. We consider Plano's birthday to be June 2, 1873, when the city of Plano was incorporated. C.J. E. Kellner was elected Plano's first mayor, along with five aldermen and one councilman. The foundations of Plano ISD began to take shape as private rural schools were consolidated into the Plano Public School. The Cotton Belt Railroad opened, and the Plano Fire Department was established after the Great Fire of 1895 destroyed most of downtown Plano. By 1890, our city's population was 824. 1895 to 1920 saw the beginnings of the downtown and community we know today. After the Great Fire, downtown rebuilt with new brick buildings and storefronts. While business was still primarily agricultural related, the city began to modernize with the installation of new infrastructure. Many of Plano's historic homes were constructed. Land for Harrington Park, Plano's first park, was donated. Concrete sidewalks were built and trash, water, and sewer service began. Around 1900, the African American community of Plano began to establish itself in what is known today as the Douglas community. Downtown Plano's inner urban station, part of the Texas Electric Railway, connecting Plano to the greater North Texas region, opened and made it possible for Plano residents to work in Dallas and other communities. Plano's Downtown Inner Urban Museum is the only remaining substation in existence on this line. By 1920, our city's population was 1,715. 1920 to 1958 were years of steady population as a small town. But towards the end of this era, Plano began to recognize its impending growth and took measures to plan, including adopting its first zoning ordinances and partnering to create the North Texas Municipal Water District. In addition to building the Cox School, downtown saw dedication of Hager Park and the renaming of city streets to a grid system. The completion of Central Expressway was a transformative moment in our city's history. With quick and convenient access to jobs in Dallas, Plano was set to have explosive population growth. New homes spread first to the east of town in neighborhoods such as Old Town and Briarwood, and then transitioned west to Highway 75 with new neighborhoods such as Dallas North Estates. The change of Plano from an agricultural community to a suburban community can largely be attributed to Central Expressway. By 1950, our city's population was 2,126. 1958 to 1985 was a period of explosive residential and employment growth for Plano, brought about by the construction of Central Expressway. Jobs began to shift away from agricultural to other types of business. Plano's arterial roadway pattern begins to take shape, with shopping centers located at key intersections. 
Collin Creek Mall became the new entertainment destination and Plano ISD emerged as a leader in education and sports. It was a time of many firsts, the adoption of the first comprehensive plan, opening the first public library, Harrington Library, and hosting the first Plano Balloon Festival. The Plano High School football team won the state championship in 1965. And in 1979, a businessman named Ross Perot purchased land in what is now known as the Legacy Business Area in West Plano. By 1980, our city's population was 72,331. 1985 to 2000 saw continued rapid growth, including the arrival of corporate campuses in the Legacy area. Along with this new major employment center came massive employment growth and westward expansion. However, Plano recognized the decline of its historic downtown and developed plans to revitalize the area. Other changes were coming. The Dallas North Tollway was extended through Plano and the President George Bush Turnpike opened. Both allowed for additional mobility throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth region. Plano was named an All-America City by the National Civic League. Likewise, Plano ISD established its reputation as a regional and national leader in public education and athletic prowess. By 2000, our city's population was 222,030. Since 2000, Plano's population growth has slowed and the city has focused on redevelopment and employment. Downtown's revitalization continued with the arrival of the DART light rail and the return of the business community. Downtown Plano transformed into a premier entertainment district. And during this period, Plano began the transition from a suburban community to a first tier suburb as growth continues beyond our northern limits. By 2020, our city's population grew to over 286,000. More than 150 years of excellence in Plano have laid a strong foundation for the Plano we know today. Today, Plano is a center for technology and business that welcomes people from across the globe. We do this while still maintaining the feeling of a small, close-knit community. A community where neighbors help neighbors and there is room for all to succeed. Plano today is a community where the success of everyone adds to an even brighter future for the city of Plano tomorrow.